Hey guys, in today's video we'll be going over Mr. Mime together, uh, specifically Guards of Mr. Mime, which I think is still one of the strongest solo queue characters in the game. And yeah, I don't think I've made gameplay commentary for this character yet. And if guys, if you enjoyed this video, please always like the video and subscribe to the channel. So I will go over the hate items in a second, just look at early game a bit. So for contesting the top thing, you always always try to charge up a boosted auto attack, knock the enemies up when it gets low, and then try to fake out the last hit. Sadly, I don't get it quite here. The enemy Serena actually got it quite, yeah, quite fast there. And sadly, that was to steal hours away because our Bulbasaur wasn't really helping me, which can happen in solo queue. So now I'm just like kind of a bit behind an XP. I try to go for this one. And this one we get, and now we just like very, very low in HP. But I can see if I score here, and the enemies will go for the bottom ice Q. I can maybe get level 4, which I do right now. Got Score Shield. So for head items, I'm running Score Shield, because Mr. Mime is a very, very strong strip pusher. Buddy Barrier, because his ultimate is very low, and because it's Buddy Barrier. And for the third item, which is why I go for these scores, I run Special Specs. Because Mr. Mime has one of the best scalings out of any abilities in the game. I think he actually probably has the highest scaling. His confusion has crazy special attack scalings, so the more special attack you have, the more damage you do. And it's actually quite easy to stack on Mr. Mime sometimes as well, especially with Guard Sword, be very good at split pushing. So right now I'm looking for my second stack right here, just a quick score shield stack. And also Buddy Barrier score shield can be very strong late game as well to just get caps done. So yeah, score shield, Buddy Barrier, and special specs is my favorite Mr. Mime build. You don't have to play special specs if you don't feel confident on it, but I would recommend trying it out. It just does so much more damage. Here we can dodge the thing with the score shield unstoppable. So it's one of my favorite things is just dodging a uh, bigly tough thing by just scoring with my score shield. Since you get that unstoppable effect, right, you can't fall asleep. And now we're just trying to farm for level 6 as much as we can. The main goals are just like getting level 4. Like, obviously, Guard Swap is nice, but it doesn't really matter. As long as you get level 4 Confusion, you can start winning your lanes very hard, because nothing can contest him, really. He has one of the, the best the, the best lasted in the entire game, right? Nothing does even close to much damage as Confusion does. Here, we already one-shot the uh, crap right there very fast with Guard Swap and one Confusion, because we already have three stacks, and the more stacks you have, the easier you will one-shot all these wild Pokemon as well. Right now, I don't want to overextend too much, but we can scout some vision, stun this guy. Stanley actually missed. But we just look for another stack, already at 4 at this point. And it's going quite well. So <laughs> then we find a nice pick-off on the enemy Serena, knock him into the wall. So the way Guard Swap works, a lot of people don't actually know what Guard Swap does. And yeah, it's... Wait, one second. I think this is interesting right now. So I don't break the goal here, and... We, this is the scenario so I talk about in my videos where we don't break the goal. And I was actually very happy here because I saw that I was like, oh, this IV saw is going to break it. But then he's like, wait, he doesn't. So I was very happy about this because now we get to farm another entire round of Ice Q. And this dread now is pretty much secured for us anyways. We have a Dragon Knight. They don't on bot lane right now. I don't think they have a Dragon Knight at all, actually. So we just get a free dread. We don't have to break the goal to get dread now, right? Like we don't. So now I can farm the left side again. I actually just want to help out this guy. Save him very fast. Guard swap, confuse the Wiggly tough. We get another kill. And now, again, we don't break the goal here. We just don't. We can farm our bottom left ice cues. We can farm another round. And then we can slowly look to break it. And the way leaving the goal up also makes your opponents overextend, right? Later into the game, eventually, if they try to defend this first goal, which is kind of hard to defend because it's really not much HP and uh, healing you get, you can actually get kills and then maybe over push into the next zone very easily as well. Because this, like, you can just take your opponents on this goal over and over again. It really does not do much protection. So we already got like five more ice cubes now. There's another one spawning, which we also take. And we can set up a push with our team on bot lane. If our team at some point rotates bot, we can try to score and then maybe push into the second goal. Here we get another ice cube. So you already see how much experience I just got by just, you know, us not killing the goal and me not having to overextend on their side. Here I find a quick combo. I'm just going to ult. We are just getting two quick hits. Mr. Mime has very, very low ult, uh, cooldown ult. So what I do is I pretty much try to use my ultimate on cooldown if I can. So right now our entire team is bot lane, right? Now I'm like, okay, I have 40. The goal is two. I'm just going to break it and I'm just going to run them down. There's no jump pads up yet. We see two opponents on the top, which means if we get this kill, we can potentially score to the second goal as far. Since we had vision on them, and that's exactly what happens. They have no jump pads. We kill the Wigglytuff, we kill the Serena, and they just can't get here in time. And now we kill the second goal. So this, you can see how big the difference can be by just, you know, playing smart around your goals and just not killing them too early. It can set up these pushes before the jump pad spawns as well. And now the goal is dead also before the next Dreadnought, which means we probably have a free Dread as well, if we want to take it. 
Here with Guardstop, Mime, I'm very aggressive, right? I try to always... So why, why is Guardstop good in solo queue? It's because you just can scrimmage a lot. Here, I just kill the Sylveon. Um, it gives you move speed. Oh, wait, I want to talk about what Guardstop does. That's a good That's a good thing. What what does Guardstop do? So you Guardstop an opponent or a teammate, and on opponents, like, it always swaps Mr. Mime's special defense and defense with the one of whatever you're Guardstopping. Doesn't matter if it's ally or a enemy Pokemon, which obviously is kind of bad, right? You don't want to really switch to one that's squishier. But it makes your confusion instantly stun. You don't you, you don't have to hit a wall. Yeah, Serena is one of the most annoying things for Mr. Mime to deal with. Like, this character just is so hard to hit abilities against. Absolutely hate it. But yeah, we managed to actually still take her down here, I think. Barely. But yeah, Mr. <laughs> Mr. Mime struggles very, very hard with Serena. So yeah, guard swap. It makes instant... If you guard swap someone and confuse, they instantly get stunned. And they take the entire damage that they would get also getting pushed into a wall. It also slows them. It gives Mr. Mime move speed. And it also does a bit of dot damage, which doesn't really matter much. But here, yeah, we just confuse. Guts of this guy, confuse, and it does so much damage. And the best part is just the kiting potential you have. You just, you're, you're kind of fast, you have good move speed, you slow your opponents, and just this instant stun without having to hit walls. It's kind of easy as well, right? It's just more reliable than a wall. The put, like the pros of the wall is just it's better in team fights, though, for sure. And, but yeah, for solo queue, I think it's very good. It's just very strong in 1v1s. So I would just, yeah. I think one of my favorite things to play in solo queue still. Another guard swap, we kill this guy right before he goes into the Rotom. We're still just protecting the goal and see what happens. And now I'm looking for a goal on top lane. Again, I've score shield. I've, I can use one more ultimate as well. Mr. Mime can pretty much ult every single minute if you farm a few crabs. So right now we get a nice score as well. I'm just going to keep scoring. Serena can't stop my score shield. The only thing that's annoying with guard swap is right here, like I guard swap my Gengar, which I kind of don't want to, right? So if your opponent, if your allies are between your opponents, it's very difficult sometimes. But you found a nice amount of kills. And yeah, we do crazy damage already. Here yeah, I blink on him, get him as well. He was kind of out of my range, but I kind of don't want to score here because their goal is exactly 12. Pikachu scores 8 more points. I mean, you know what? We take those. I pretty much don't need more experience anyway, so... Letting the Pikachu just get his coins and it's probably for the best. Also allows me to have more coins for potentially late game. My team is kind of overextending in the enemy base right now. They got a bit too excited, I feel like. Um, so now it's like, it can be a bit scuffed. I'm just recall again. I see like all these ice cubes up. I'm going to farm some points and farm my ultimate back up. This is what I talk about, right? You just have to farm steel ultimate. I have 20 seconds to get it back up, which is not that much time. But as you can see, it fills up quite fast. In case you don't know, every single one of these gives you energy or ultimate recharge back or unite recharge. There's a Rotom up on top, which I don't think was going to die, so I just didn't really contest it. They just don't have enough time to even finish it before Articuno spawns. And now it's like kind of, it's very scary, right? Two of my allies are dead. So what I want to do as Mr. Mime in late game is just, um, I want to, uh, this, I can't really stop this. I want to ambush my opponents. So I just walk into brushes and hope people face check into me. Here the Wigglytuff, we just go on him, but I'm just waiting for the next opponents to maybe come, walk up and help this Wigglytuff. I'm slowly starting Articuno just to... Oh, I try to <laughs> I try to blink and confuse this guy, sadly missed. And as soon as I see my opponents walk up, especially like a Cinder Ace, I'm just going to wait them instantly. I want to force fights, he will get one kill, guard swap, confuse the next guy and just auto-attack him to death. Another confusion. And yeah, now the game suddenly looks pretty good and we get Zepdos or Articuno. So I want to be I want to play around this side of the map in late game as Mr. Mime and just look for these guard stop confusions into an instantly ultimate or just ultimating in this in this path right there where they have to walk into Articuno. And then after ultimating, I can also hit like a three forming confusion into the wall because it's very easy in that path to hit it. And yeah. Also, what I like to do as Mr. Mime, if you want to hit your guard swaps effectively over and over again, just make sure you use your boosted auto attack, right? Like guard swap someone confused if they run to you. Get that boosted auto attack off, they're stunned, you can guard swap again. <laughs> Another guard swap, no sadly the snakes does kill me in the end. And yeah, I think it's still, like, it's one of the most fun bits as well. It's my, it's actually my most played character in solo queue, Mr. Mime still. And nothing's even close, I have like around 500 Mr. Mime games now, and the next one is like Lucario on 300 or 400 games. So, one of my favorite things to play, and a very, very underrated, especially, it's just he has such strong laning phase that people underestimate, even in solo queue. You just need level 4, level 4, he's one of the strongest characters in the game for quite a while. His Unite move is very, very strong too. You can always engage for your team. Uh, you can always peel for your team. You saw on bottom, once I just ulted just to Buddy Barrier my Venusaur and save him. And yeah, P Pokemon that can just spam your Unite moves are generally good, right? Because Unite moves are so OP in this game that you just 
win fights with it over and over again. And yeah, I usually like to go bot lane with Mythamime as well, so just, you know, the FDU, you can win bot lane harder and hopefully have an easier time getting that dread. And if you guys, uh, yeah, enjoyed this, and if you haven't tried it out yet, I mean, it takes some time to it, ta it takes some time to learn. You won't find it that easy if you start playing it, but after some games, you probably get a feel for it. You pretty good damage here as well, 69,000 69, damage, which is quite nice, quite nice. And yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. See you in the next one. Bye.